We're continuing the, the life of Joseph. Now, this morning's reading will focus on Genesis chapter 39. It's the life of Joseph, part two, and sort of a subtitle for this morning is Overcoming Temptation. And we're going to read uh, chapter of Genesis 39, 1 to 19. It'll be up on the screen for you. Now, Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, brought him from the brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of the, his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favour in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household and he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From that time, he put him in charge of his household, and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with any, anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, well like many of us, and after a while his uh, master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me, but he refused. <laughs> with me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. One day when he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants was inside, she caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. When she saw that he left his cloak in her hand and had run out of the house, she called her household servants. Look, 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 she said. This Hebrew has brought me, brought to us to make sport of us. He came here to sleep with me, but I screamed when he heard me scream for help. He left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until her master came home. Then she told him this story. The Hebrew slave he brought has come to make sport of me. And as soon as I screamed for help, he left his cloak beside me and ran out of the house. When his master heard this story, his wife had told him, saying, This is how your servant treated me. He burned with anger. Father God, as we just take some time to consider again the life of Joseph, the ups and downs, the twists and turns, Lord, may we be faithful as Joseph was faithful. May we see God's hand of provision upon our life as we remain faithful to you and faithful to your word and faithful to the call. Though temptation may come, may we stand strong. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you've been journeying with us, you know that Joseph has been sold as a slave. And the story of Joseph is a bit of a shadow for us as believers. And today we'll see some principles that we can benefit from as we take on board as men and women of faith. He was sold by his brothers into slavery, into slavery. He's been mistreated. He's been stripped of his identity. He's now in Egypt, this young boy. He's at the crossroads of the world. Egypt, this place of wealth and wonder and splendor. The Egyptians were a powerful race. We know they were brilliant architects. Their pyramids stand today. Maybe some of you visited them. We still don't know how some of them were built, but there they are today. And so Joseph is here in this amazing city, this place of influence and splendor and power and glory. And in the middle of that is this slave who arrives at Potiphar's house, the captain of the guard, 
Now the captain of the guard's job was to look after Pharaoh personally. Friends, he wasn't sold to just anybody, but God's hand was upon his life. God was working behind the scenes to guide and direct his life. You and I live every day surrounded by the world. It's joy, it's wonder, it's tragedy, it's splendor, it's opportunities. Surrounded by it. The world may try to engulf us. The world may try to smother us. There may be things that test us and try us and intimidate us. But we are told to stand strong. We're told the Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. The Lord was with Joseph. From the pit to the palace, the Lord was with him. As the Lord was with Joseph way back in history, so he is with us today. As we go from this church this afternoon, from this service, we go back out into our Egypt, back out into the world. Don't let it destroy you. Don't let it suck the life out of you. Stand strong, because we are a child of God. God is on your side. But let us think like Joseph did. Even though my surroundings have changed, my situation has changed, my family has changed, the Lord has not changed. He is still with me. He is still with me. Wherever I go, whatever I face, Jesus says to us, I will never leave you or forsake you. I care about you. Up on the screen there, Genesis 39, 3 to 6. When his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord gave him success in everything he did, Joseph found favour in his eyes and became his attendant. Potiphar put him in charge of his household. <coughs> he entrusted to his care everything he owned. From the time he put him in charge of his household and all that he owned, the Lord blessed the household of the Egyptian because of Joseph. The blessing of the Lord was on everything Potiphar had, both in the house and in the field. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had. With Joseph in charge, he did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. That is amazing. Here is this slave who is now in charge of this powerful man's house. Joseph had success in everything he touched. It prospered. But he was a slave. He wasn't meant to have a life of blessing, success and opportunity. The slave was not supposed to be a successful person. Up on the screen there for us. Some, oh, good. When you are struggling through what seems insignificant to you, hang on to the promise of God. Let us be faithful in the process. Don't get stuck on that big thing or that successful place. Just be faithful in the process. Let us be faithful in the process. Let us listen, let us learn, and let us receive from God today. When God is on your side, the rules change. If you're part of God's family, you're not alone. You have God working on your side. God involved in your situation. He is there as a source of strength, hope and blessing. If God can prosper a slave, what can he do for you? What can he do for me? In these verses we see a number of things. First thing today, up on the screen there. Though Joseph's brothers stripped him of his coat of many colours, they did not strip him of his character. Hear me today. If you want to be in the world but not of it, you need to be a man or woman of character and integrity. 
in the world, yes, but set apart from it because of your Christian faith. Because you're a person of strength and character and integrity. People will take their best shot, but we will stand strong. Because God is our hope, strength and salvation. Be a person of character. Joseph's character stood strong within him, as you heard from our reading. He didn't deserve all that happened to him, but his character didn't change. Second thing today, God gave Joseph wisdom. Who needs a bit of that? 2020, 02, 02, 2020. I'm sick of seeing it on my Facebook page already. <laughs> Same back with this forward. <clears throat> now Joseph was probably about 18 or 19 years of age. And he's now in charge of Potiphar's household. That would have been a big deal. Within the world. Within his little world. Within our church. Within our community. Within our world. We need wisdom. We need wisdom and insight to see into people's lives. <laughs> We need wisdom and insight as we reach out beyond these walls. We need wisdom and insight to grow as godly men and women of character, faith and integrity. We need to believe that God will give us the right tools and equip us for the tasks ahead. He will show us things beyond our human knowledge. God's word will speak clearly to our hearts and minds. You see, Joseph worked for Potiphar, but he was God's servant. Colossians 3 tells us, whatever we do, do it all to bring glory to God. Have the right attitude at work. Have the right attitude at home. Have the right attitude in your street and in your neighborhood and in your workplace. And give glory to God as we be his disciples. Seek God for wisdom and bring him glory in what you do and say. Third thing, back that way, back this. Joseph kept his eyes on the Lord. Joseph kept his eyes on the Lord. Many things had changed, but he stayed focused. Things will change in my life, things will change in your life, but stay focused on God. Don't let Satan distract you, don't let people drag you away from your hope and faith. The bright lights of the world may blind you, but don't stay there. Stay in touch with God, in touch with His Spirit. Genesis 39, 6-8. So he left in Joseph's care everything he had with Joseph in charge. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. He refused. Five things we can learn from this passage. Temptation comes often when you have achieved a level of success. Up on the screen there. A couple of things for you to look at. Temptation comes often when you achieve a level of success. But if his wife didn't want Joseph when he was just a mere old slave out in the field? No, she wants him now because he's in charge. He's in charge of the whole show. And he looked pretty good too, we're told. Satan will wait to when things are going well and you might relax a bit and enjoy success, enjoy achievement. Then the temptation comes. Friends, be on guard all the time. Be on your guard all the time. Second thing, temptation sometimes comes from unexpected places. Joseph said, no one is greater in this house than I am. My master has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. How then can I do this wicked thing? How can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? Temptation sometimes comes from unexpected places. You can hear the amazement in Joseph's voice. Like, what are you doing? I have a 
I have responsibility and a role and here you come wanting me to sleep with you. You have a husband. You have everything you could desire. Why do you want to do this wicked thing? Next slide, number three. Temptation can be rejected, but it may come back in the form of compromise. We have Joseph and we have Potiphar's wife. Satan may, may have whispered in Joseph's ear. Maybe you better think about this. She's your master's wife. She could make life hard for you. No one will know, no one will see, just between you and her. No one will care. She won't tell, you won't tell. The ball will be sweet, just, just do it. But Joseph knew someone would know. He would know. God would know. But he chose the wrong path. He opened the wrong door. At work, at school, at home. People think that no one will know. No one will see. No one will hear. No one will know what's going on. But Almighty God sees, hears, knows it all. Joseph had faith and he could see further down the road than that moment of temptation. Just let that resonate with you this morning. He would have never become Prime Minister of the most powerful nation on the face of the earth. If he didn't choose the right thing. Friends, history is full of sad stories, isn't it? About men and women who did not follow Joseph's example, who were consumed by their temptation and acted on it. God had a great plan for their life, but when the moment came, they turned the key, they opened the door, and they took a step. They reached out their hand and were consumed. Temptation overcame them, and they were lost and did not achieve the things God had for them, because they didn't say no, no, no. Guess <clears throat> what? No. How many potential Billy Grahams, I wonder, are out there, but will never speak a message, never see thousands saved? How many potential Mother Teresas? How many potential Christian business leaders? How many potential missions and, and churches that were never started? Because people didn't say no. Because when the moment came, that was all they could see. And their lives were destroyed and they faded off into the crowd. Don't make the mistake. But be like Joseph. Temptation may continue daily. Joseph said, how can I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. He stood against the temptation day. He stood strong. He said no. On the screen there, Ephesians 6.11, put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Let us take a stand, friends. Take a stand. Take a stand. There's no sin in being tempted. Jesus Christ himself was tempted, but he did not sin. It's what we do after we are tempted. Do we say okay or no? Fifth thing up on the screen there, next slide. Run from temptation. Put yourself, don't put yourself in that position again. 
Genesis 39, 12. She caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. It's better to lose your possessions or lose your job than to lose your integrity. You can buy more things, you can get another job. But it's harder to get back your conscience, your character, your integrity, your trust. Joseph kept all things intact. But sadly he ended up in jail because of the lies Potiphar's wife told. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, we're told in verse 20. Guess what the punishment was for attempted rape? It was execution. And the captain of the guard, who was Potiphar, would carry that out. But Joseph is put in prison and not put on the execution list, for the hand of God is on his life, but because he said no and not yes, because he ran away and kept away, but still the lies came. And he ended up in prison. So we finish this morning, we'll just touch on verse uh, Genesis 39. Let's see where Joseph has ended up as we finish today. But while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warden. I want to be him! That's the, uh, any, any Josephs out there? He's knocked down, but he gets back up. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison. Of course he did. And he made him responsible for all that was done there. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care. Gee, this is a good bloke. Because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Praise God. Let's be a person like him. A person of character, a person of integrity, a person of courage and hope. A person whose God's hand is on our life, for he, God is on our side. Be a person like Joseph. There's more next week. God bless you. Amen. Thanks, Carolyn.